This is season two of 15 with Fosca, the podcast that brings you authentic voices from Italy in real time. Become a part of our community by subscribing and stay right where you are to hear inspiring personal stories from Italians and expats alike, conversations about the current scenario, and to unpack together the intricacies of Italy and Italian society and culture. Today. Buongiorno mondo and welcome back to 15 with Fosca the podcast. I couldn't be happier to have with me today Cristiana Galai. Buongiorno. Buongiorno Fosca. Cristiana, as I mentioned in her bio, is currently the director of Verto Education's campus here in Florence. So Cristiana, if you agree, I'd like to just get right into our conversation and ask you about Verto because it's a fairly recent addition to the international education field. So can you tell us a little about Verto Education and what you do? Absolutely. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this space, uh, you know, and the and this conversation, which I think is really valuable for thank all you. of the professionals in the field and anyone who's interested about knowing a little bit more about international education. You're right. Verto was founded in 2017, mm-hmm. just before the pandemic. Uh, with the very ambitious goal of impacting higher education and to make uh, travel and transformation a fundamental component of it. Okay. If you think about the name of the program, uh, Verto, you immediately think about its Latin root, which is linked to transformation. Okay. And I also mentioned travel because Verto really want to make sure that education abroad is the path to least resistance for mm. college education. Mm. Uh, we are all very familiar with uh, the study abroad opportunities that the students have, uh, but with Verto, uh, thanks to all of the great programs in Florence, but uh, with Verto, the students start their college experience with us, and then they transfer to one of our partner institutions or their desired college of choice or a different option. Okay. So they're really here to understand what they want to do in life. Okay. So I've, um, I've always told you that I love this model. I think it's a great model. And I think it's an important model um, for several reasons. And I want to talk more about how it is inclusive as a model, because I know this is something that's really important to you. It's also really important to me. And how Verto and you are making education and education abroad um, more accessible to a wider population of students. Can you talk to me a little bit about those efforts and what what Verto's mission is? Yes. So um, inclusion and diversity are uh, incredibly important for Verto. Uh, The kind of participant, as a, you know, for the description that I just gave you about the program, are different from the, um, you know, standard student who comes to Florence to do a study abroad, who is already enrolled at college, right. and they know their path, and they know what they want to do. They had time, you know, to embed the education abroad in their financial plan, not just the, like their major or their minor. So mm-hmm. they save money, or it's part of their plan since the very beginning. Uh, with Verto, the students have the opportunity, you know, regardless of their financial background, to study abroad, to, to, to study somewhere which is not their home country, mm-hmm. and to learn about different cultures. And that becomes the path for them to actually access, uh, you know, college yeah. education. And I think this is great because it, you know, allows us to uh, host a very diverse uh, student population. Inclusion is definitely a very powerful tool, yeah. I think, for nowadays uh, citizenship and for the, our culture and Absolutely. for everybody's culture. And Verto is an accessible program and an affordable program. And this, of course, uh, is in itself uh, a tool to support inclusivity. It's one of the tools. It's not the only one. Um, We have a lot of students who are Pell Grant eligible. Mm. So the federal Pell Grants are usually um, offered to students who come for exceptional financial uh, needs. So they have a very fragile financial background. And we have a high percentage of those students. That's great to hear. uh, In our program. And that's amazing. Verto also has a a non-profit arm, let's call it like Mm. this, which is called the Verto Fund. And they provide additional grants and scholarship for students who are more in need. That's great. And if you think about international education in general, and education, especially in the U.S., uh, if you compare, you know, the uh, socioeconomical background of the students, 
uh, only 14% of students coming from a lower income background, you know, they get their education, you know, yeah. they complete their degree. That's right. Uh, in comparison with 30% of middle economic or mm-hmm. socioeconomical background and right. 50, 60% yeah. of students who come from uh, a high yeah. economical background. Um, I don't think affordability is the only tool that mm-hmm. we use at Virto. Okay. We also, uh, you know, research uh, as much as we can and try to provide students safe spaces where they can, uh, you know, develop themselves as adults. Um, one of the questions that I'm asked often mm-hmm. is why is Virto different? Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, the answer that I find myself uh, to give people uh, is is that Virtu is a very intentional program. Yeah. And I witness that every single day, uh, you know, with the students, uh, with the staff. Uh, the staff is really working hard uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, we provide opportunities for students, uh, not just to, um, you know, merge with culture, but also to sort of engage uh, in a deeper conversation with themselves. Okay. You know, it's yeah. kind of like they're, first step into a path of Mm self-authorship. You know, they become the author of their own story. Which is wonderful. And honestly, I've I've told you from from the first time really we met that, you know, seeing this sort of major shift in higher education due to so many factors that we don't even have to go into now. But I think there's also been a definite change in the way young Americans are viewing their education. And I think Verto is kind of amazing because what it does is it combines like a gap year and a study abroad experience with a first year in college, a first semester in college experience. And so it's giving those students who maybe are looking for an alternative or are looking for something really different or who want to have that sincere desire to spend time abroad as really young adults because that's the difference. And so I wanted to go back to that a second. Um, because you're a veteran in the field, so you worked, you've worked in study abroad for, oh, I don't know, over 15 years. You've been at Verto for a couple now. So what are those differences that you see between the students who come more traditionally, so in their third year or first semester, um, compared to Verto students who come, some, you know, they've just turned 18 or they turn 18 while they're yeah. here. So what kind of differences have you seen in the students? So one of the differences, which is really also impacting myself as a professional, Mm -hmm. is this sense of agency that the student have. They really want to be part of the conversation about their future. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that the students who come for study abroad are not on that path. But in a way, they had already made some of the choices. Absolutely, yeah. You know, again, going back to what I was mentioning, they know a little bit more what they want to do. Right. And the students, like the the, the freshmen I work with, they're really at that uh, stage in life uh, where everything is possible, (laughs) nothing is possible at the same time. As you said, you know, they just turned 18. And so I think that this is challenging for for us as professional because they really challenge us. You know, they're like, I'm here. You you can feel it that they're here to understand what they want to do. And so they they challenge you to be part of that conversation. But at the same time, I think that um, we can look at the student more than as allies, you yeah, know? yeah. They're like partners, right? Partners uh, in you know this again this path of self authorship for them, but also allies in the way we can impact uh, you know the culture around us. And yeah. I think it's very pertinent, especially in Florence and nowadays. Mm-hmm. Florence has always been a city where you had to you know, dig a little deeper to go yeah. under the more, you know, touristic, you know. Right. To uh, find authenticity. To find authenticity, to to get to know people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, the freshman students that uh, I'm exposed to, you know, thanks to this program, they really uh, engage me and the rest of the staff in this conversation in a way that we feel like we can act change. Okay. And so I think it's really um crucial, you know, for nowadays society and for Florence especially to uh, have a conversation which is meaningful Mm -hmm. and where they feel they can be part of the change and not just the cause or something that is happening around them. Exactly. I'm really intrigued by quite a few things that you just said. And I'll start with the first one. 
Now, Virto has campuses all over the world, okay? I think Florence is one of the most popular, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what does Florence still have to teach students today? I'm really curious about your opinion, and then I want to know a little more about how you see the students as having changed, in addition to being more um, in charge of their uh, path, if you will, being agents of their destiny. Um, how have U.S. study abroad students in Florence changed over the years? And also, what does Florence still have to offer these students in such a globalized world where students can go anywhere now? Why Florence? You're right. And that's a very <laughs> tricky question. I know. <laughs> I love tricky questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I find myself often, uh, you know, reflecting about what, you know, the city, what can we still offer to students. And I think that usually I go back to what I have always shared with the students and partners about Florence and what it meant, uh, you know, to, to grow up in Florence. And I think something that Florence can still teach is cohabitation. Mm. And I think that it's very important nowadays. Fundamental. <laughs> Fundamental. We need to get along, everyone. And I always tell, <laughs> you know, my students how, you know, since I was very young, I was used to listen to many different languages and, mm -hmm. you know, seeing people coming from different parts of the world, not just for a holiday, but people who wanted to live in Florence. That's right. And so I have a lot of international friends and they were studying with me at high school mm -hmm. or, you know, family friends. And I think that this is an important lesson. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, uh, we like, you know, different in culture, you know, there's tolerance, it becomes a very pertinent. And yeah. even if in, a, in an ideal, you know, space like, mm -hmm. you know, friendship or, uh, you know, professional relationship where supposedly everything is, you know, mm -hmm. just there for, for the good, uh, you still need to understand another culture. You, st you still need to understand respect. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that Florence can teach because there's so many people in Florence that come in from all of the different part of the world and we need to uh, like we we need to keep being tolerant every single day and I think that's a great lesson that we can teach our students um, there's also you know some of the things that I hope that the student uh, you know come to Florence with it's really the same that I was hoping they would come to when I started, you know, mm -hmm. 16 years ago in this field, come with an open mind, open eyes, yeah. be brave, and honestly, don't be afraid to fail. I hope that the student will start cherishing their failure as a step forward towards what they want to do, what they like, uh, what they want to become as they don't. Right. If anything, it's a process of elimination. I love what you said about the gift that Florence has to give today, because you gave a very good answer um, focusing on the beauty of this international community that we have. And what I used to tell students all the time when I was still at Stanford was, guys, there's a whole world out there. And it's if you want it, it's yours for the taking. Because people come from everywhere to visit Florence. And that's exciting. And the one thing that joins us all is our love for this city. And so I really like the fact that you talk about the lessons that living in such a multicultural, international, lively city, especially with a very young population, because we have a very young student population in Florence, that this is one of the many gifts that Florence continues to give. But I think something I'm curious about as well, because you have such a, uh, because you have a younger group of students, and those first couple of years of college make a huge difference. Um, I'm curious about what the students say once they leave or when they write to you when they're, you know, on their campuses back in the U.S. What do they say to you? They say, Christiana, this is what I learned or thank you for this. What, what are those important takeaways that the students who are spending their first semester of college at Berto and Florence, what lessons are they learning? What are they taking back with them to the U.S. and bringing to their college experience that is so different from their fellow, um, you know, first-year students? I think that they are very surprised about how much independence that they were able to develop, yeah. especially at that young age. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fresh off from high school, and I think that at times they didn't even expect that they wouldn't be able, you know, to yeah. live in Florence, to be independent, mm -hmm. to uh, cook for themselves, uh, to travel, to get to know other people, uh, to find their favorite places in the city. Right. So I think that they really uh, acknowledge uh, the dependence that they have developed 
and the curiosity. We have a lot of students uh, who are interested and apply to a second semester because they want to go somewhere else. And I think this is really a gift for us yeah. because we uh, hope, uh, you know, that the student at the end of the program uh, have developed that curiosity to want it to know another culture yeah. and then another and then another. Right. And also uh, some of them, you know, we work uh, a lot on reverse culture shock, yeah. which in this case is huge for Tremendous. them. Tremendous. Because they're 18 and they're going to go back on campus where some older fellows won't have had the, that opportunity yet. Right. And so we're working a lot with our partners to develop conversation about volunteer work that they can do, you know, to support uh, study abroad, for that's example. Great. So that's super important. And I think that, yes, independence and curiosity are some of the things that they acknowledge they have developed. Okay. And, and also tolerance, you know, because they yeah. learn how to live with their peers uh, and, um, yes, and, you know, just have being a step ahead in their uh, path towards their independence. Mm -hmm. So they really also acknowledge the fact that they are able to make decisions for themselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, with their parents, of course, of course. but like they know a little bit more than what I want to do. I, I feel like they leave their much less confused, I think <laughs> which so is something too. that, you know, we, we always, you know, well, say about, you know, international students. I think they're just a little less confused and mm -hmm. they know a little bit more what they want to do, mm -hmm. or at least uh, they allow the thought of the unknown, unplanned, and something that it's in theory, so it's right. developing. Right. And that's done. okay. And that's it's okay. okay. And, you know, I want to ask another question, which I think is really important in this, as you, you have these young, um, curious students who are in Florence, how do you cultivate that sort of um, integration you were talking about? I don't like the word integration, but how do you offer the students authentic experiences? How do you give them the reality of Florence? Um, that's something that was always challenging because students tend to sort of stick together. There are a lot of American students in Florence. And so there is always that temptation to sort of take the easier road and just sort of hang out with people that you just speak English with and hang out, go to places where you really only see other international students or tourists. So how do you try to sort of instill in them a real sense of the culture Different ways. Okay. Um, students, I have to say that students really help us uh, because, again, they're younger. Um, some of them don't even have the financial means to yeah. do all of the basic stuff that, you know, older, you know, upper class college students would right. do. And so they're more open to more local experiences, which don't really entail, you know, the use of too much money right. or, you know, doing what everyone else is doing. Okay. They're not there yet okay. because they don't compare with something that is back home and they just left high school. They don't know what college with, with a campus is. Exactly. So they're more open and they really support the staff. So our we have a high ratio of staff per students and they uh, really work as mentors. Nice. Not just, they're not just there to answer questions or to support in case of need. Right. And going back to what I was saying in the beginning, the program is very intentional so there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring a lot of them so the student from an early stage in the program they tend to trust the, the staff a mm -hmm. lot and the faculty wonderful and so that is really crucial for us because all of our you know activities the calendar of activities that we plan even the excursion you know we are trying like oh instead of going to Venice which is of course amazing let's try to go to another little town next to Venice or right. you know smaller places, which I know is also, and I want to acknowledge that a lot of the institutions in Florence are really striving and working hard to do that. Yeah. I have to say that in our case, uh, due to the nature and the, of our student, I find it more, uh, I find it easier. It is way, easy because, because again, they're more malleable. I know it's, when students are 20 and 21, they have their own agenda. Yeah. They're already off. They've already, in my experience, my former students had already planned out the whole quarter. They knew exactly where they were going, what they were going to be doing, et cetera. And I think that is a nice thing, that you have this community that is very eager to yes. be participatory yes, um, because of their age and because it is such a unique experience. And so I like the idea of that, that maybe it's a little, you know, it's a little easier to bring them along for the ride and say, look, you know, this is really what the culture looks like, and this is really worth it. 
And I think another um, apparently, you know, far concept to what we are discussing right now, which is mental health, uh, oh, yeah. is also, uh, you know, in a way, a positive component okay. of this conversation. Because the student, due to, you know, the high impact that mental health uh, and the discussion about mental health uh, and the their own, uh, uh, you know, understanding of the importance of mental health have, the student need time to uh, rest and reflect. Okay. And I've seen, uh, and uh, you know, these need growing with our freshman student population. So, yes, they want to be part of what's going on in Florence, but they also need time to, to rest. Mm -hmm. Because at times, the experience itself is overwhelming. It's a lot. For them. It's, it's a, lot. a lot. So they tend to be more engaged with very simple activities, okay. like journaling or, you know, doing some arts and craft. Mm -hmm. And so this helps us engage, for example, with local artisan. Wonderful. And they, uh, those are some of our most successful activities. I'm sure. Um, on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that they understand what's going on in Florence and that they also mingle with students from other programs. Absolutely. But at the same time, uh, you know, they we use uh, their need for off time and, and reflection and mindfulness, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to build a more uh, off the beaten track, uh, you know, um, plan series of activities of, right, and events. series of events for them. Thank you once again for tuning in to this week's episode of 15 with Vasca and for continuing to do so. Grazie mille e alla prossima volta. <laughs>